There is nothing outside my window. The day it appeared, the familiar sounds of the city streets that filled the corners of my small apartment disappeared, replaced by deafening silence. I went to my window and looked out, only to be faced with vast, inescapable nothing. It was as if the world had become split in half into one that existed and one that simply did not. It was neither dark nor bright, near nor far. It wasn't anything at all. Our world's story, redacted by some cruel god for reasons unknown. Those who haven't witnessed nothing might tell you to close your eyes. But even when you close your eyes, there's still something. A shimmer of light, the ghost of something bright, a face or a voice. To truly experience nothing cannot be described. Infinity is impossible to comprehend because we are surrounded by walls our entire lives. Walls you can see and walls you cannot. To in one instant suddenly see those walls fall away before your eyes shatters everything you thought you knew about the world. I wasn't sad or frightened. In fact, the sensation was familiar like I'd been practicing for this moment all my life, to stand there and face the ultimate question. My mind simply said, yes, here it is. And I went about making my coffee. I remember putting on my jacket and walking down to the street below, coffee in hand where once was the other half of a sprawling metropolis. Now everything fell off into infinity. Emptiness? No. Even emptiness infers boundaries. This lacked scale or perspective. It just was. My thoughts should have gone out to the people I knew to once reside on the other side of that nothing. But no names came to mind. I only felt the ghost of a sensation similar to grief. And then it evaporated. People lined to the streets for miles, gripped in silence. No cacophony of traffic and human discourse. No birds flying overhead. No wind. Just nothing. I walked among the statuesque onlookers, all blank-faced as if they too felt nothing. No fear, no wonder, no euphoria. I was witnessing the collective realization that our entire existence just might be a lie. No emotion for that experience existed until that moment, and so it looked like nothing. A man broke the ranks of the gathering crowd and approached the razor-sharp edge that was indiscriminate of where it drew its boundaries. Without a moment of hesitation, he stepped into the nothing and in turn became nothing. No one stopped him, or uttered so much as a word. He was only the first to go. Others followed. First a few, then a dozen, then what looked like hundreds, driving like cattle out of existence. Others started turning back as their previous realities seeped back into consciousness. Then, 
that was running in both directions and screaming. The real danger wasn't from the nothing, but from those who feared it. The inevitable question was growing in everyone's mind. What was on the other side? Was there another side? One thing was for certain. No one walked out of the nothing. As the world around me sank further into chaos, I returned to the safety of my apartment and witnessed the slow decline of humanity. I wondered, while watching from the safety of my window, what made me different than those who ran blindly into the nothing different from those who stood at the knife's edge and screamed, Rapture. Was it all those years of being alone in my own skull, conditioning me to be emotionally numb to the point that nothing mattered in the first place? That the nothing was just an extension of my own state of existence? Did people walk into the nothing because they felt no reason to live, or because they thought that whatever was on the other side was larger than the life they were already living. One by one, the lights turned off across the city. Systems broke, and people revolted. All the while, I sat in isolation, rationing the last of my bread and beer and contemplating nothing at all. Weeks came and went, and the havoc in the streets grew into a deafening roar. The sounds of humanity at war with itself does something to the psyche. I can't pinpoint the exact moment that it happened, but something had shifted. I realized that the nothing brought me comfort. It was the senses that brought me so much unhappiness. The hunger in the pit of my stomach. The smell of smoke and gunpowder. The sounds of human suffering wafting up from the streets. The sight of my own sallow reflection in the glass pane of my window. I finished the last of my beer and tossed it in the pile of timbers that was once my table and chairs. Since the power went out, they had become the fuel for the fire that kept me from freezing to death fire would die soon. I picked up the leg of a chair and turned the rotten piece of second-hand walnut in my hand and wondered how long it could possibly burn. I let it tumble from my hand instead of feeding it to the fire. Then I opened the front door and glided down the steps onto the street, now covered in refuse and the occasional body. A rat scurried out of a trash can and was immediately leapt upon by a child of perhaps eight or nine. I turned away from the tiny screams of the rat and the feral growling of the child and continued on until I stood with my toes only inches from oblivion. Standing there, looking straight into the pure non-existence that was the nothing It occurred to me that what I wanted in that moment, more than anything that I had ever wanted in my entire life, was for something to happen, some profound event, to shift the tides and return meaning to all our lives. But the truth in my mind, and it was painfully clear, was that there would be no rebirth, no redemption to return us to the good graces of the universe. This was all there was or ever would be from now on. Only the choice between being and not. The choice was clear to me. In fact, it was really no choice at all. And so, without any further thought or hesitation, I let go of everything I ever knew. And smiling for the first time in a long time, I stepped into the nothing.